Hey, what's up everyone? We're here to talk about lifting technique today. And I think there's three main ones. There's gonna be the push-pull split, the back and bys, chest and tri split, and the upper lower split, which many of you know is what we do on this channel. At least I do. Hopefully a lot of you guys out there do as well. I'm gonna talk about what the benefits of, of all three are and where I think the drawbacks on all three are as well. So let's talk about the push-pull split. Now, this one's really simple. On one day, you do all the exercises that require you to pull. Now, any pulling motion is gonna activate your bicep. When in, anytime you bring something in, you're flexing and bringing that bicep in, focusing on all those pulling muscles. And I think that's, it's a good exercise, or it's a good routine. It works decently well. And then obviously the next day, you do pushing. So obviously those triceps on that bench press, or those overhead press, or pretty much anything like that. And then I know a lot of people activate like shoulders differently because obviously when you pull, you're gonna activate your shoulders and when you push, you're gonna activate your shoulders. So they usually split some sort of way to not really overwork those. And then legs fall into another category. And then if you add into cardio and abs, that falls into another one. Now let's talk about why I don't like this. For the same reason why shoulders are tricky. So anytime you pull something, you're working predominantly all those pulling muscles, but you're also hitting general areas. You know, anytime you're pulling, you're using your chest. You know, you're, you're still gonna pull a little bit. Anytime you push, you're using your chest a little bit, you're using your shoulders a little bit, you're using your triceps a little bit. So if you spread that out over a calendar month, so say you do push on Monday. On pull Tuesday, you are going to hit those muscles secondarily that you hit that day before, getting a diminished result on that next day minor in one week probably yeah it's not going to diminish you too much and then you do legs and then you do abs or then you do another pull day well now that pull day you're going to hit all those push muscles that next day all those you know that push pull split you're going to hit them again and then you're talking a fraction here a fraction here and you spread that over a month you know you've diminished a little bit a little bit a little bit more a lot and if you spread that over a year that explains why a lot of people come up to you and they're like hey i've done this i've done this routine for two years and i haven't got anything out of it i haven't changed i haven't got any really that bit much stronger you know i just i can't get any results from it that's what i think the downside is of the push pull and the back and buys chest and tries routine i think they're linchpin heavily on secondary muscle hitting and the just diminished results you get following the weeks uh, ahead of where you're at. So let's talk about, that's obviously the push pull. Let's talk about the back and buys, chest and tries. Now, this one is what I did for the first like eight, six to eight months of my lifting. And it was okay. I got a little bit of strength out of it. You know, some of those beginner gains that people look forward to, but I just couldn't get really strong and I couldn't add a lot of size. One. My diet wasn't super on point at the time, but you know, I just couldn't help noticing on say, say chest Monday, international chest day, right? You do a really, really solid chest day. So that next day obviously is going to be back and buys. Now you can't tell me that on that chest day, you smash those serious bench press, you do the overhead press, you do like the shoulder raises, heavy shoulder raises, flies, all those that you didn't hit your shoulders really hard crushing that bench press or those flies. And those flies hit your bicep, they hit your tricep, they hit your shoulder, they hit the back part of your lat a little bit depending on how, how well you extend it. So again, just like with the push-pull split, you're hitting those muscles. Again, minutely in the first beginning stages, but when you spread this out over a calendar month or you know six months, you can see that, you know, say you knock off 2% a week. So you 2% here, and then it's 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%. And you know, by the end of six months, how much weight did you not lift? Like what is the percentage at that far out that you just reduced yourself? You know, you put all that time into supplements and your diet and your lifting, but you hit reduction of effort at the very end because you're going to secondarily fatigue different muscle groups just in virtue of lifting. Now you focus on groups, but you're gonna hit those secondary muscle groups. And it's the same thing with legs. I think within the leg schedule, they really suffer. You know, so say you do back and buys, chest and tries, shoulders, because again, most people don't hit shoulders on those first two days. 
they're going to hit shoulders really hard and then legs. So out of a calendar week, out of one week, you've done legs maybe one time. If you if you got in a second leg day, you know, you hit, we'll just say one, for the sake of easiness, one. You So you've hit your chest once, your back once, biceps, triceps once, legs once. Now, if you compare that to what I think is the superior workout method, which is the upper lower split, I've got you beat four times over in each one of those exercises each week. And again, you spread that out over six months, exponentially more lifts have been done using the upper lower than the traditional other two. Now, I think that's a really good thing. One, because where those other two lack, when you hit the upper lower split, you get to see yourself pumped, swollen, you know, however you wanna call it, you get to see that growth, what you look like all at once. Your chest is pumped, your biceps are pumped, your forearms, your triceps, everything, your back, it all is volumized and pumped at the exact same time. When you could really see your weak points, you're like, okay, you know, we j I just hit a really hardcore three hour upper body day, my shoulders have zero pump, I don't have a good, pump, like any sort of vascularity through them, maybe you need to hit shoulders more. Or same thing, maybe you got a really good chest day and really good bicep day, but your triceps, they don't have a pump, they don't feel very fatigued, so you know you need to incorporate more triceps. So there's that really flexibility and you could say like modular um, creation with the upper lower split. Same thing is that next day you're hitting legs. So say you did your first Monday. Monday is upper body day. That next day is legs. So if you worked out at 8 a.m., you have 8 a.m. that whole day all of leg day until that next 8 a.m. workout for upper body again to rest. Now that's what a lot of people criticize my workout for, like oh, five days a week, upper, lower, upper, lower, upper, lower, it's too much, you don't have time to rest. A lot of experts in the industry say you need 24 to 36 hours to get a well-formed recovery. Obviously 48, a little bit longer in between groups would be that much more effective, but who has time to go 48 hours routine hitting shoulders or chest or back? So you have almost two full days, like just about two full days of recovery, which not only gives you an optimal recovery compared to the push-pull split, obviously because of secondary hitting of those muscle groups, but now you, you, ex you expand at the same time and you heal at the same time. You're not crushing biceps, healing it a little bit, going in the next morning, and hitting you know triceps they're connected it's it's all part of one muscle group on your arm so your biceps are still trying to heal while you're doing triceps they're still going to stabilize they're still going to activate minutely but you're using them again so in their middle of their healing process and that rebuilding of that lean muscle process you're using them again so you're diminishing that healing factor which i think is a lot of the reason why people say i can't grow or i can't get any stronger it's because you're, you're using those muscle groups again and again and again. That's why I think the upper lower is just vastly superior. You grow at the same time, you heal at the same time, and you gain strength across the board at the same time. Because if you hit chest super hard, you're going to affect your shoulder day, you know, two days later when, you know, it's not gonna be as strong. So now it's not as strong, and that going into that next week, same thing, you hit chest really hard, triceps not so much. Now your chest is becoming overall like stronger, but you've already diminished your shoulders twice in two weeks. So you can't say that your shoulders are gaining that same amount of strength. So now you're disproportionately strengthening various parts of your upper body. And that's where you start to get injuries. When one part of your muscle group or that upper, that upper body or lower body, whatever case you may be, when it isn't as strong as that muscle group that's supporting it. I encourage you, I encourage you to give it, give it two months. And it's gonna be really bad for the first like week or two because your body is just not used to getting slammed. So I take two rest days, Wednesday and Sunday. I think it gives a good break between a good break between rest days and it gives you that solid recovery time in between each one. Now obviously that's upper, lower, rest, upper, lower, rest. So depending on the week, you'll have three uppers, two lowers. That next week, you'll have three lowers, two uppers. It's really nice, it gives you that well-rounded appearance, that aesthetic body of not only having a large chest and a large upper body, 
but nice legs because you hit them twice one week and three times that next week. So no matter what, you're always getting a good sense of, of equal balance between those muscle groups. So for all those reasons, I think it's really, really important to give it a try. And I encourage you, as I just said, to give it two months. Two months and I guarantee you will like it. If not for the simple fact that when you walk into a gym, say it's chest day, the worst part about going on chest day, Mondays, is that everyone and their mom is going there on the exact same day. So to get a machine for your chest is really difficult when there's a lot of people online. The best part about the upper lower split is that it's infinitely expandable. As long as you give a break to each individual muscle group, you can use any machine you like. If I'm doing chest and some dudes on this machine, I know I'm gonna have to hit back three exercises from now, so I can hit back. I can go where no one's at, hit some deadlifts, come back, do biceps, maybe do some shrugs, and then chest when you know everyone else is quick because it's been 30 minutes, they've done their little 30 minute workout, and you know they've gone home, boom, I'm hitting chest. So it's vastly more you know maneuverable in the gym, and it's just a no brainer. You don't have to be like, oh, is it like, do my biceps get hit? Boom, upper lower. Anything above the waist is upper body. Anything below the waist, lower body. It's about as easy as it gets. It gives you the best results for the most amount of time. And you get in the gym, you get it done, and you grow at the same time, thus giving you the best benefit of any exercise program you can get, which is real results that don't take a year. Because I'm gonna put up a little image of what I look like before, 120, 125 pounds. This is what I look like after a year of the upper lower split. That's about 165, 170 pounds. And all people are saying that that's crazy, you know, 50 pounds ish in you know a year. It's doable because I was so small at that level when I doubled my food intake, added the right amount of supplements, and then a good workout, you get that sort of results. I don't do any cardio. I just don't have to. My metabolism and my diet and my supplementation is so like dialed in from having had done this for so long that I really don't have to. That being said, if I were to notice that I was putting on a little bit less than lean body mass, you added some cardio. If you really wanna know what types of cardio that are effective for bodybuilding and not just running on a track for 12 miles, I could definitely let you know. Hit me, on, hit me up on Twitter, hit me up in the comments below. I'd be happy to give you a thing. Abs, obviously I don't do abs either. One, I'm not like a super Instagram fitness model who's worried about a cut 12 pack and you know doing shirtless Calvin Klein model like interviews but that's some late game late game stuff I'm not too worried about right now once you have a decent set of abs built and you bulk you know they're there they're squintable you can kind of see them the second you go through a cutting phase and you start to drop that body mass they're gonna be there it, abs are like one of the biggest tricks in bodybuilding because you don't have to take the like the diet pills you don't have to do abs like six days a week once you build a good set it's all about maintenance on the short side which is like your cutting phase but that's a whole new another video about abs and like the fitness industry hope you guys enjoyed the video a little bit different one we're in a different location right now downstairs in my house it's nice and cool down here and you know gives me a chance to like talk without any noise or distractions hopefully you guys enjoyed the video make sure to smash that like button if you haven't noticed the people in my comment section we created a youtube page for all the beginning rookie youtubers make sure you check them out you can see them in my comments they're awesome dudes they're always commenting like hey nice video and stuff like that make sure to give them some love definitely a group a good group of guys who deserves your support as well the most important part about this entire video is take it easy